Hi everybody. This is uh, this is the moment that I've been uh, telling you about for the last couple of weeks when we were gathering the questions from the community uh, for the off chance that we'll be able to sit down with Arnoldis Nauseda, the CEO of Smart Lens. And guess what? That chance is here. It's now. Uh, Arnoldis is here in sunny Kiev and uh, is visiting uh, visiting us in our uh, beautiful new office. Um, Welcome everyone and one thing that's really that's really particularly great about this particular session is that we have our we have the Smartland CTO uh, Ilya Abrastov with us, with us here as well so he'll be able to answer some technical questions about Stellar and the, uh, the Stellar relationship with the platform and some technical issues that a lot of uh, a lot of you guys have been asking us lately so there it is Welcome, you two. Thank you so much for being here. We have several more sub questions, but the majority of people just want to know how is the STO? Yes. So, yeah, it's a good question. It's actually what is happening now. So, we have a soft launch now, and uh, it's all ongoing. And the people, you know, we will see, I think all the community will be satisfied with the results, uh, and you will see the results in the coming uh, months. So, uh, that's the status of this STO. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a soft launch and uh, uh, we are actually working uh, uh, in two channels. We're working on the digital marketing on sort of consumer and uh, retail investors. And uh, in the parallel, we're working and talking uh, to, uh, to institutional companies and investors. So uh, there are two channels and uh, actually it's going through the diligence on some institutional investors. And, uh, and also, uh, you know, talking about the further STOs, we are also planning to put on the, our platform uh, second and third STO, which is uh, would be in, uh, potentially for property or SME. Uh, so, so the people will be able to choose then uh, probably uh, the first will be not closed and you will see the second one on the platform. So you'll be able to, to choose uh, or to invest in both uh, STOs at the same time. So the bottom line here is so far so good. So the bottom line, you know, we delivered the first STO and uh, it's all happening. So, you know, basically we are the first, I think, in, in the world who tokenized the property uh, for the mass market. So it's really a big achievement and uh, it was not so easy. So we broke uh, a lot of ice. Uh, you know, in terms of regulation, in terms of the you know, technology, the platform, uh, and we build it in the most reputable uh, jurisdiction in UK. So that's that's a big achievement, and we have a lot of basically publicity and interest uh, as uh, pioneers and innovators in this space. So you know, I'm very happy for the team and for us and for Smartlands. It's just uh, I think that's the beginning of journey. Uh, so. Now investors in the tokenized properties are the early adopters who understand about some of the people, you know, they just don't understand, we need to educate them. So, and so that's a, probably the key challenge to educate them, what is this tokenized property, what is the fractional ownership, that will be uh, you know, the key objectives, the key goals for the marketing to explain in simple language to the people uh, who are willing to have their ownership in, in real estate and the real assets. You get three cheers for all that. I mean, I'm looking at what's going on in the community and a lot of people actually giving you a lot of props for uh, doing as much as you have done within such a short period of time. So kudos for that. Um, and with that, we actually sort of segue into the second question about the MTF license. People believe in your uh, project so much that every, everyone wants to know what's the next step. Uh, a few weeks ago, I believe, you announced that um, you're in the process of obtaining the MTF license. Could you talk a little more about that? It seems to be pretty important for everyone involved. Yes, as, as we are doing tokenization, as you know, so as, as we all know, that liquidity is the key driver of, this, uh, of our business model and of the tokenization. So we are basically uh, building this uh, secondary market and liquidity in uh, several ways. 
So we are in the process of the, you know, our own MTF, which is kind of long journey. But we also have a solution which we will deliver in three months. That is planned, it's a bulletin board. And then the people will be able to buy and sell on P2P level and the tokens, the security tokens of this fractional ownership uh, that they have acquired during the initial offering, during the uh, token offering. So uh, they will be able to place you know, order and then the other, on the other side the, the, the person will be able to buy and, 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 and buy this uh, fractional ownership on, on the secondary market. And, uh, and also we have a partner which we will announce soon, uh, which has already uh, quite close to the MTF and uh, it's, it's uh, I think, uh, the first one in UK who is a security token exchange. Uh, basically signing the partnership and, uh, and then there will be a liquidity there in, 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 on the interim basis before we have our, our, our own MTF license. So the liquidity pools is, is very challenging to, to build. So that's, that's why we have several ways how the people will be able to have a liquidity uh, for the, all the STOs that goes through our platform. Now, speaking of partners, I know you guys uh, went to New York and did a huge consensus thing. And then you announced in your company blog that you had a very productive meeting with a, a consensus, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Lubin and everything. So everyone's just dying to know how did that go? What are the uh, outcomes of that meeting? How's everything with that? Well, the meeting uh, went well. It's it's really cool that uh, we actually met these people. And at the moment, we're actually in the sort of negotiation stage, where potentially we can, you know, have a good, 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 good deal, you know, mutual deal, where we can basically leverage and uh, uh, our different teams and the leverage also the growth of Smartlands. So we have a kind of a cool question. I really like this one because I'm a, I'm a futurist. I like thinking about the future. So we have seen the uh, unicorn vision that's been announced in New York about the, the, the nearest two-year perspective for uh, Smartlands. I wouldn't call it a strategic program for development because two years is not is hardly a strategic uh, term but a lot of people want to know what are we going to see in the next five years 10 years 20 years i personally love talking about that a lot because fantasizing about things doesn't really mm -hmm. give you a whole lot of responsibility for whether or not those things will happen yeah so but it's a it's a great topic for a you know academic conversation yeah so what do you think is going to happen in five ten twenty years well, I think uh, it's very, you know, long way, you know, five, ten, twenty years. But uh, I think that the industry will will evolve. Uh, as you know, I have graduated from the Oxford uh, Said Business School and FinTech program, and uh, I have basically a validation of the yes, hypothesis and the industry where it's going. And at the moment, we are in very early stage of this industry of the tokenization, and to tokenization is happening everywhere in all different card uh, parts of assets and uh, commodities and, uh, and, and etc. So, uh, so uh, as several professors actually validated that in 5-10 years uh, this may go mainstream and at the moment actually all the entrepreneurs, all the entrepreneurs who wants to be in that space uh, has to go into this uh, space and start uh, basically doing this business. And once you know, five, ten years, it goes mainstream. So then we will be in, in very good position, and uh, we'll, you know, basically grow exponentially during this period since today, because the trend is is, is upward. You know, it's going uh, up, and uh, it's an exponential change because it's a technology. So probably the key is, is just uh, adoption, and we see the adoption happening all over the place. Uh, regulators are basically innovating and uh, changing the regulatory landscape. So we see it's all happening in, in different parts of the world. And, uh, and uh, blockchain is being also adopted, you know, in different industries as well. So it's all happening. And for Smartlands, I see, I see it's, it's uh, you know, we are the first mover. 
so we, we plan to raise capital additionally and grow, grow faster. So there are a lot of challenges ahead, but uh, you know, we are on. As you see, we develop, we develop our team, we expand, we work and uh, we deliver. So, so Speaking of challenges, let me ask you this. I, yeah. I, I've seen a lot of questions, a lot of peop, uh, uh, questions, a lot of people are interested in knowing when will American investors be able to participate on smart lens. It's a, I, it's, it's a very important issue as far as I can tell. Uh, everyone's asking, I mean, we have a lot of uh, subscribers, members of the community, just uh, looky-loos people who are just looking to, you know, get into new things, more exciting things, and uh, uh, just, well, it boils down to when will Americans be able to invest, well, participate, let's put it this, uh, this way. So, Americans could invest if they have the company, for example, in UK, they can invest through the company in UK or Europe. So they can ask, but uh, the physical, of course, retail investors would be a tie everything. Um, so they will not be able to invest unless we have a legal framework. So uh, we believe that you know, it's for the, our business model at the moment, regulation in the US is not so business friendly. So I know that there is some changes which is sort of happening. I know the, the, that some of the there are talks that uh, regulation may change. Uh, CF, uh, the CF uh, crowdfunding laws will change in the US, then uh, we'll be able to adapt this the same legal framework as in the UK and then leverage business in the in, in US. So it could be, uh, you know, at the end of 2019 or 2020, but it's hard to say because there is dependency on, the, on, on this uh, regulatory thing, which is a bit uncertain at the moment. So that's, that's about uh, how they can invest and how they can expect uh, to be investing in, in SmartLens projects. Okay, Ilya, so welcome. Thank you so much for being here. This is a, uh, it's a great pleasure. We haven't had these conversations with you, although we have met Arnoldus a long time ago uh, when he's just taken the reins as the CEO of SmartLens. But you, we see for the first time, welcome, uh, welcome aboard. And uh, right off the bat, tough questions. Community wants to know what's the deal with Stellar. What are the current benefits? What? How is everything? The whole thing with Stellar is working out with smart lines. Thank you. I'm just going to say hi for all our community. You are really the best community. One of all the blockchain projects. And uh, answering the question about Stellar, what are the actually the benefits of the Stellar network? So I'm on our technical team. We can see that uh, the biggest benefit is of using the Stellar is that uh, Token Stellar is uh, technically the perfect architecture for to implement uh, everything that is related to token economy, and in particular uh, security tokens and compliance with regulations. We established a regulator segment uh, of Stellar really quickly, and uh, we delivered MVP. We delivered the first uh, security token offering in compliance with FCA. And uh, that's a huge achievement, while all our other competitors uh, are still struggling on implementing contracts, protocols, and other deep technical things. So now, once uh, the product is ready, uh, the product is live, uh, we are focusing on other features that are important to actually uh, make our ecosystem wider and uh, bigger. The next achievement for us is, uh, first of all, secondary market to allow investors to trade security tokens. Um, then we are going mobile. Mobile version of the wallet uh, will come really soon. And uh, this year we also expect that uh, we will make a huge redesign of all our components to drastically improve user experience and user interface to actually fulfill our vision to be a number of uh, for retail investments. We know that uh, the main focus of the Stellar Network or the Stellar Development Foundation is payments uh, we know about the IBM launch of Blockwire on the Stellar Network. But uh, uh, we, first of all, among our team, we are thinking about security tokens and uh, we are evaluating all architectures, all technical concepts. And um, actually, uh, Stellar Network, uh, as I already said, uh, have a perfect support for tokens. And uh, from the product point of view, it's uh, the blockchain actually doesn't really matter if you talk about end users and 
and user experience. Um, it's, um, we can compare it with, let's say, the question in which programming language we need to implement a dev site uh, for end user, for product, uh, it doesn't matter. So we can work with uh, the blockchain that is uh, most suitable to fill our technical needs and uh, stellar for us as a competitive. Okay, well, thank you so much, Ilya. That was very informative. And how was it, Arnaldus? What did you think? Do you have any thoughts on uh, Stellar's uh, involvement with SmartLens? Actually, yeah, I wanted to hear more about the particular benefits of Stellar uh, for the SmartLens platform. Yes, uh, we basically keep a relationship constantly, you know, basically, but uh, as you know, we have a pipeline of different projects. So we engage colliers uh, on these projects, on the pipeline. So uh, I think in the coming you know, five projects, you will see that uh, colliers is a part of these projects. So that's, that's how basically it will unfold in, in our tokenization projects, where the colliers will take uh, part on, 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 on one side or another. Okay. Any other uh, notable partnerships lately that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, there is one coming this week, uh, you will see it's, it's about uh, uh, STO liquidity, so yes. <laughs> Some words. Yeah. So, uh, so any, other, uh, any other notable partnerships that you, uh, that you want to uh, tell us about, maybe come in the picture maybe a little bit? So as I mentioned previously, it was, uh, there is one coming, which uh, we are about to sign this week, and then we will announce uh, for the community this week, it's about, uh, it's related to MTF and liquidity. So that's that's a good news actually. We, we can we are we are structuring this you know components where the liquidity is a key driver and the, that's that's where we already put this you know bit on the puzzle that liquidity will be there for the OSTOs. Here's an interesting one. Uh, this wasn't the most popular question on the board, but uh, I certainly am interested in knowing when you guys plan on. Uh, 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 starting tokenizing agricultural products. Uh, as I remember, that was the original claim to fame by Smartlands. And uh, I know that you're still planning on doing that. Any movement on that front? Agricultural products, yeah. Just or assets. Just uh, well, products, assets, whatever, whatever you feel like. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so the agricultural is, as, as we see, we kept it. In, uh, because initially it was the agricultural, we changed, we opened a bit wider, so agricultural still remains as a, as a potential tokenization project on, the, on our you know, platform. So uh, we have several projects in the pipeline, and uh, we planning to do, whether it could be, a, let's say, wine yard, whether it could be orchard, uh, or some agricultural business, uh, we haven't decided yet, but it's still, and consideration at the moment we want to figure to, you know we to, to keep the focus uh, because you know we step in another industry another asset class uh, it's, it's a real estate but uh, for agricultural then you need a bit of uh, additional resources so we focus on the you know deliver of the you know the first project's property and and, and the second probably there will be property as well uh, but uh, uh, agriculture still remains, as, as, as I say, it's, it's uh, part of the potential and uh, big potential, but uh, there is no concrete uh, message at the moment. Well, it's, yeah, I, uh, everyone on the board have read a lot about the concept of tokenization. Everyone realizes that tokenizing real estate makes the most sense right now. The infrastructure is in place, the legal frameworks in place, and I take it the main problem, well, not a problem, but a hurdle, tokenizing uh, agricultural assets is that it's just really spread out in different jurisdictions that you can't really compile a legal framework for doing something um, uh, with the land, with, uh, I don't know, with crops, I'm not really, it's not my strong suit yeah. talking about agriculture, but that's something that I'm, I'm surmising yeah. from the situation in that particular industry. I know you guys talked about heavy industry, uh, machination industry and everything. So, uh, are you doing anything, uh, anything with those uh, with those assets? So, uh, 
No, the legal framework is straightforward. It's all sorted out. It's, uh, it's very universal. Basically, we can do an ag agricultural business, uh, whether it's a land, whether it's a business. We can do it tokenization. Basically, uh, we use the same legal framework. So we can have, the, let's say, a wine yard in the uh, U.S. And we, it's actually, we use the U.K. legal framework. We use the company that tokenizes, and that company has then ownership of that asset. That's the same with the Nottingham. So the, the legal framework is in place, it's just a matter of going into agriculture as an industry because there are specifics in this industry as well. And uh, so then we need uh, you know, resources for that additional, then the, basically we lose out, out of focus, it's, an, it's another focus. So, uh, but you know, as I said, it's, it's, it's possible, it's just a matter of the time. Awesome. Well here's one question that really is a killer. Killer question. Killer question is, who the hell is running your Twitter account? <laughs> <laughs> so why you ask? It's well, not so I, active. I, I, I want to kill it. I want to kill this interview. I yeah. want to. I want to just come up on top. Uh -huh. Yeah, I want to go out on a high note. Yeah. So the question is, who the hell? Well, let's forget the hell part. Let's. Who is running your Twitter account? Is it yourself? Is it your wife? Is it your pet? Uh, Who's in charge? Yeah, I'm in charge, but probably I need to give the, to my marketing team to run this to run this uh, Twitter account because it's not so active at the moment. Yeah, I'll, I'll, when I get a chance to talk to your marketing team, I'll ask them which GIF or GIF they'll plan on putting in charge. Of.